Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so I am here to give you a recap, or at least my personal take, on WWDC 2020. So a lot of people had thought of a lot of different things, and I had said, I can't see these things happening, I can't see these things happening, and pretty much it was very interesting. So first of all, iOS 14 invented Android. Like, they invented it. It, it never existed before. Uh, but basically, it is a carbon copy. Every single update is a copy down to the Google Translate. Like, everything is a copy from Android. So, like, literally nothing was new there. And that was really interesting. I mean, even car starting have been around for a long time on different apps. I mean, Tesla, obviously, a lot of different companies have done that kind of stuff. So it's very interesting that, you know, every update was that. Every, from the app drawer to your widgets to, you know, I mean, you can't move everything out of the way so you can see your background yet, but maybe that's on iOS 15, because that's very futuristic. And again, no one else has that. Uh, but I just found it very funny that every single thing they introduced was Android. And even things like on iPad OS was S Pen from Samsung. All the Apple Pencil can now do, you could always do with your S, your S Pen. You can write it in any field. You can convert anything you write to text. You can also take that writing and put it to any app and copy it. So it's, it's very, every single part of that you could always do on the S Pen. So it's really interesting that we saw literally nothing new on that scape. But when it comes to Mac OS, again, things that have been on Windows for a while and everything like that. But the big thing that really happened here was something that I did not think was going to happen because of the big issue with it. I was right in that there was no hardware. I did not think there would be any hardware announcements, no MacBook with this already but they are going to make their own processors and their own GPUs and everything on there. Now, this is really interesting because it really is a struggle that Windows has had for years and Apple just schooled them on how it's done. Like they are doing something that Windows has tried to do multiple times and has failed. The really interesting thing that was brought up though is that why hasn't Google done this actually? Because one thing that is probably the best feature of the new union between Mac OS and iOS having the same processors definitely has to be the fact that you're going to be able to switch it so that every app you have on iOS and the huge app store is now going to be available on your Mac OS, and that is huge. It's something that Google is trying to do currently right now with Android, but the current hurdles they're having is that very same issue. You're having Intel processors instead of having Qualcomm processors. So I really think Google should actually stick to making more Chromebooks with Qualcomm than Intel, because then the app development for Android apps that work on Chrome OS will be much, much better. It's, hap it's what Apple's doing. So that is something that I think Google should actually copy on iOS. And something that, I don't know if Microsoft ever could do this, but man, are they just getting schooled on how to do it? They are making it a, a one-stop shop for developers to move over their apps. And they're also running a simulated version of the app if it's not compatible. So they're kind of crossing all the main hurdles that developers have had and why Windows RT, Windows S has never been successful. So this is really important. And I think this is really something of really great to be quite honest. What Apple is doing with their own silicone is really awesome. And I hope it is, is replicated. I hope they are copied because that is something really big and it really makes for more of a seamless transition. And it's something, again, that Android and Chrome should be able to do. Galaxy Book S, I think it was called too. All of these ones that have Qualcomm processors on there are basically useless because their apps don't work. And that is the change that is needed to work with different silicone. If you want to be able to do it, that's gonna be very interesting to see how it's developed. 
What's also kind of interesting is how good are Apple's graphics cards going to end up being? Because to be quite honest, they've never been on par with Qualcomm in that sense. Great processing, but graphics cards, no. They're, they're just, they always get outclassed. What honestly helps them when you do um, an Tutu benchmark, which does processor, graphics card, RAM, everything, and compare that to any iOS to Android, what you always get is, is the iOS portion always destroys in the processor and everything amongst that. But the graphics card almost is always outperformed on Android in comparison to iOS. So that's really gonna be interesting to me to see how good their GPUs really do and if they could do really well on things outside of their own software. Because obviously their software is gonna to run top notch on there. And they did have some demos already, which are interesting, but obviously those are demos from the company. So how much you can really trust them? I would wait for third party reviewers to really kind of test them out. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What did you think of WWDC? To me, it was copy Android and school Microsoft. Let me know your guys thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me.